Hey guys, Richard Holder here. What happens if you have an LS in your truck, car, maybe a swap mode, and it has low oil pressure? What do you do? How do you find out what caused it? Lucky for you, my 2002 Silverado has low oil pressure, and we're gonna find out why. We're gonna go step by step, find out what the problem is, how to check it, and how to solve it. Let's check it out. So this concerns me a little bit. Hey guys, Richard Holdner here. I wanted to show you that I do more than just dyno testing my truck here, O2 Silverado, manual throttle body, you know, like they're supposed to be. But here's my problem, I'm gonna show you. Check this out. Check out my oil pressure. The whole time I've owned this truck, it's been a lot higher than that. This has happened recently. I'm not sure if it's a sending unit or if <laughs> maybe, maybe it's a pump or an O-ring or bearings or, you know, all the other options. What I'm going to do is got a mechanical gauge, got some line, got a fitting. So what I'm going to do is tear into this thing. I'm going to take out the fitting on the side of the block, put this in, and I can compare the two. Now I know already, because I know I'm going to get comments on it, that taking the feed right off the pump should be probably higher than where, we're, where the sending unit is. But this should give me an idea. I just want to see if it's fluttering like that. I want to see what's going on. If I show 60 pounds there or whatever, we know that it's different. But I just want to check and see if I need to replace the sending unit, or it could be a gauge or a cluster, which is kind of common in these two. But I'm going to tear into it now and find out. Okay, I'm going in. Okay, I've already removed this shield just to get access to where I need to go to with, with the ratchet. Otherwise, kind of pain. I gotta reach my arm up and around and twist it, and it bends in unnatural ways. <laughs> so I went and pulled this off. Now I can get to the get access to the uh, to the plug and see what I can do. Go ahead and show you guys what I'm talking about. We'll get under here. Okay. There we go. See the fitting there? Ratchet. Let's see if I can take that off. Oil's gonna spill out all over. I'll put a rag down. Then we'll be able to put the fitting in. Okay, shall we put the fitting up in there and then we'll put the hose on? Show you what it looks like. All right, let's start it up and see what kind of pressure we got.
went to like 58. We've got an last ditch effort. We're going to try to change the oil, maybe put a little stabilizer in it, see how that helps. We'll have to take it for a ride and get the thing heated back up, see what the oil pressure is. But let's find out. Change this oil. Still very hot. Very hot, very, very hot. We'll also get a chance to take a look at the oil and see if we see any bearing material or anything weird in there. The next step, if this doesn't work, might be to take it apart and change the pump and check the O-ring. Could be lifters, you know, lots of stuff it could be. But we'll find out. All right, I'm going in, do some surgery, take the filter off, probably cut the filter open, take a look inside it. The oil looks thin, smells a little bit like fuel. The truck's old. Yeah, what are you gonna do? All right, let's cut this filter open, see what's inside. Is wrong. I think that this thing's ready to go. Now it's time to find out if we did our job right. We filled it with oil, put a new filter on, and we made sure to put oil in the filter before screwing it on. Now we'll start it up and see what the oil pressure is. But remember, this is cold oil, so we're expecting the oil pressure to actually be higher. We'll take it out for a drive and see if it drops down. there. Let's see what we're seeing on our gauge. It's 
side. That's showing a little more than that in here, which is interesting. Let's see what happens when we get some RPM in this thing. See, at 2,000 RPM, we're over 60 when it's cold. So what we'll do is we're gonna drive it around and see what happens find out whether or not our oil pressure goes back down and then we can talk about what might cause that if that happens so we're back from the uh, trip around the block about 10 times get the thing warmed up find out what the oil pressure is see that still looks fairly low it's showing about that to what we had inside they seem to be both the same when we checked them when we compared them last time Let's see they were showing almost dead on 40. what happens when we rev it up it seemed to be going good when we were revving it up before So at 3,000, we're over 60, which we like to see. Maybe yeah, I'll drive it around some more and find out what's going on. I'm curious now about the discrepancy between the two gauges. This is a mechanical gauge, which I tend to trust a little more. But there's definitely a difference here. So the question is, we should have more pressure where I'm testing with the mechanical gauge because that's coming right out of the pump than we are at the sending unit, which is up in the block. So is there any way that that's possible unless the gauges are different? Let me know what you guys think. I'm gonna drive it around. After going through all the simple things, it turns out on my particular Silverado, the culprit was, ta-da, the O-ring on the pickup. As you can see, I'll go ahead and zoom in on this. Here's what happened. You see that O-ring? It's so brittle, it cracked when we were trying to take it off. Now, <laughs> in full disclosure, I didn't drop the pan on this motor. I was dyno testing, I gave the keys to a buddy of mine, he took the thing apart, dropped the pan, changed this, and said, hey, here's your problem, and I wanna show you something. Let's take a look at these other O-rings. When you're changing these, there's a variety of different O-rings. What I do is replace the color and size that came off. These are all different thicknesses, outside diameter, and inside diameter. So make sure to pick the right one for your application. And no, unfortunately, I don't have make, model, and year to tell you which one of these goes on which one of these applications. You just have to look at it, and when I don't have anything, when I'm just putting a, a motor together and don't have any oil rings to pick from, I usually pick greeny. But that's just me. Now we figured out what the low oil pressure was on my particular vehicle, but there are other reasons, and here are some other things to look for. Here's another culprit for low oil pressure, although it's fairly rare. This is the cam retaining plate. You can see this seal up here. If this cam retaining plate gets loose, it will allow those passages, which go through the lifters, to bleed oil out. That could be another potential piece. This, <laughs> the infamous dog bone. This is more common when you're putting the motor together. I've forgotten these. I'm sure you guys have forgotten these. If you forget to put these in, not only will it have low oil pressure, it'll have almost no oil pressure. The final things you can look for if you have low oil pressure, although these would be fairly rare, and they're usually accompanied by, at least one of them is accompanied by another big problem. If the lifter comes out of the hole too far, then you'll get oiling issues also, you'll lose oil pressure. But if the lifter comes too far out of the hole, it means something else is missing, like a push rod or a rocker or some other big problem. One of the other causes of low oil pressure, and again, this is usually during assembly and not happening while you're driving is the freeze plug in the front of the block. It's behind the front cover and it's connected directly to the oil galley right after the oil pump. So if you forget to put that in, much like the dog bone, the oil pressure will be very low on startup or non-existent at all. So remember, don't forget that freeze plug. Okay guys, what'd you think about our quest for oil pressure? Here's the takeaway. If you're looking for causes of low oil pressure and it has oil and the sending unit's not bad, start working your way between those two and you'll find the answer. So let me know in the comments, what do you guys think? 
are there other causes of low oil pressure? What have you guys found? Make sure to let me know. I'm Richard Holdner. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, and I'll keep testing.